grace, mercy, and peace, they are yours. From God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The sermon this evening is based on one verse, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. I forgot to put it in the bulletin for you, but it's only ten words. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. I think it's fair to say that going into a new year, most people have a positive outlook on what's going to happen. If things are going well, they can only get better. If things aren't going so well, next year they will improve. And even if things don't get better in the next year, at least you've learned to live with how things are going in this year, just as long as they don't get worse. But what if things do get worse in 2023? What if you lose your job this year? They're predicting a recession in 2023. And not only do you lose your job, but you struggle to find a new one, maybe many months, maybe the rest of the year. You have to dip into your savings. You have to tighten your belt. You have to cancel your plans. And what will other people think? They invite you out for drinks and dinner, and you have to decline, but you don't want them to know the real reason, so you have to make excuses. Maybe you can't even imagine what it would be like to have that financial struggle. What if things do get worse in 2023? Your health takes a huge turn for the worse. You have an accident that changes your life forever. A close loved one suddenly needs your constant care. What if your family falls apart? What if your kids stop talking to you? What if college becomes unbearable? What if you're graduating this year and not really sure about what you want to do or feeling a little overwhelmed with taking the next step in life? What if your friends stop being your friends? What if you just can't cope? Those might seem like what-ifs to you, but for many of us already, these have already happened. They already happened in 2022, or 2021, or 2020, or 2010, or 2000, or even before that. None of us should think that any terrible what-if couldn't possibly happen in our lives. Dwelling on what-ifs brings anxiety. The tragedy hasn't even happened yet, and already we fret and dread and wring our hands and worry, worry, worry. We dread what could happen in 2023 and beyond. We fear the challenge and change that these what-ifs can bring. We wonder if our faith is even strong enough if something truly trying or terrible would happen. But there's one thing these what-ifs can't change. And no, it's not our faith. Our faith the Christian faith goes up and down all the time looking at those circumstances. No, what doesn't change is the object of our faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. If you lose your job in the next year, Jesus will still be your good shepherd make you lie down in green pastures, to lead you beside the quiet waters, to restore your soul. If your health deteriorates, he will still be the great physician to bring you healing and comfort. If your family falls apart, Jesus will still be your brother and God, your father. If school or work becomes overwhelming, Jesus will still send his Holy Spirit to comfort you. If your friends stop being your friends, Jesus will be with you always. He says, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. If you just can't cope, 
Jesus takes all his, your anxieties on himself because he cares for you. Jesus will not change. He is the same yesterday and today and in the future. The Jesus you trust in now, your Savior, your King, your friend, your brother, he will be the same Savior, King, friend, brother in 2023 and forever. He won't change. No matter how much your lives change, Jesus will not. He will remain the same. When you need assistance and assurance in the middle of a constantly changing world, run to the one who does not change, who is the same year after year. It's Jesus. But what if things do change next year? What if you get a promotion at work that suddenly leads to a great increase in pay? Now suddenly things aren't so tight. You have a little bit extra spending money to carry around. You can buy that TV you've wanted to buy. You can go on that vacation you've wanted to go on. You can do all kinds of things that you couldn't do before. What if things do go much better in 2023? You're, you finally get over a long illness. They discover a cure for whatever has been ailing you. Your mental health improves. What if things do get better? Your family relationship grows stronger. You get to reunite with friends or family that you haven't seen in years. You make new friends. What if you excel at college or at the start of your next chapter in life? What if all you're worrying was for nothing? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. But will same old Jesus fit your new life in 2023? Is there a point where life on this earth becomes so fantastic that you don't need Jesus anymore? Now I see some of you shaking your heads or thinking about shaking your heads, but don't be deceived. The Bible says, pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. And you can think of the, some of those people of the Bible whom that happened to. King David grew up as a lowly shepherd boy. Now, his family was likely not poor by any means, but they certainly weren't royalty. But God made David king over Israel. From humble beginnings, he rose to be a great ruler. And as king of Israel, David lost sight of God at times. There was the scandal with Bathsheba, he lusted after her. He slept with her. He tried to cover up when she got pregnant and had her husband killed. On another occasion, David's pride took hold of him and he counted all his fighting men, all his soldiers, just to see how strong he truly was all by himself. When David's life got better, he was tempted to forget what God wanted and do what he wanted. His son, King Solomon, was no different. Even though he did grow up royalty, he was quite humble at the beginning. Do you remember? At the very beginning of his reign, God comes to him and promises whatever he asks, whether it's wealth or power and in humility, Solomon says, I have no idea what I'm doing. Please give me wisdom. And God gives him wisdom, but he also gives him power and wealth. But when Solomon's life got even better than it already was, he forgot what God wanted. He married 300 women and had 700 other women besides that. They led him to worship other gods. Even the Israelite people as a whole exemplify this. When times were bad, when there was a famine, or they were being conquered by a foreign power or being oppressed, then they would call out to God, God, save us! 
but it didn't take long after God rescued them and their lives improved for them to turn away when their enemies were at bay, when their storehouses were full, to forget the Lord their God. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He's the same whether you're rich or poor. He's the same whether you're successful in the world's eyes or not. He's the same whether you're healthy or not. He's the same whether you're young or old, whether you're surrounded by family or alone. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And how is he the same? He is the same Savior. Whatever place you find yourself in life, you still need salvation from sin. Perhaps it's easy for us to recognize our own wretchedness when we're at life's lowest point. We have a human way of equating earthly success with moral rightness. But if your life improves in 2023, in many ways it will only be something that covers or glosses over the wretchedness within, as Paul says in Romans 7. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? There's only one answer to his question. Thanks be to God, who delivers me through Jesus Christ, our Lord. How is he the same? He's the same mediator. That's what Paul calls him in 1 Timothy chapter 2. There is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. Only Jesus guarantees that you have a perfect relationship with your Father in heaven because he stands between you and God and advocates on your behalf. Only Jesus connects you to the Father of heaven, heavenly lights, whom James says is the source of all good and perfect gifts. That's why Jesus asks, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? No earthly wealth or success or anything can buy your soul. Rather, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. How is he the same? He's the same king. The same one who protects you from all your enemies. The same one to whom you owe your allegiance. The same one who works all things for the good of those who love him, for, for those who have been called according to his purpose. Your life might change in 2023. And in fact, it's likely that some part of your life will change in 2023. But there's one that won't. Jesus will be the same in 2023 as he was in 2022 and 2021 and 2020. He will let, never leave you nor forsake you. You won't be able to to outgrow him. Jesus. Yesterday. Jesus today. Jesus forever. The same. Amen.